Hello, my brother and sister. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Welcome to this hope cast from the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. I am Reverend Dr. Charles F. Marshall, the senior pastor. This is a place where we encourage spiritual growth and nurture God's children to take care of self, community, and the world through Christian education, radical hospitality, authentic praise, and worship, and service. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Fountain of Hope Christian Church. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to come before your people. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to worship together today. Lord, this day that we've never seen before. Bless all those who are joining us today, Lord, that they may be encouraged by something today, that they may be empowered by something today. Let your spirit move in the mighty rushing wind like it did at the day of Pentecost. Bless in the name of Jesus. We, Lord, we just ask that you would meet every need according to your divine will and your divine majesty. We thank you and we praise you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the 25th division, beginning at the first verse, where it reads, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways. Oh Lord, teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leaves the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us hear these announcements today. If you have any prayer requests, you may send those prayer requests to Fountain of Hope Christian Church, P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia 30308. You may mail them at any time to Fountain of Hope ATL at gmail.com. And we will be praying with you, for you, that God move according to God's divine will. Also, you can connect with us on our website at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com. There you will find our monthly newsletter. Please enjoy the newsletter. If you'd like to receive the newsletter, please enter your email address and hit subscribe. Newsletter is sent every month. And if you'd like to be added to the listserv, please enter your email address and we'll be adding you to our listserv. You also are joining us here with YouTube. YouTube is our channel and you may subscribe to this channel. We encourage you to please subscribe. Hit the button that says subscribe as red button that's on your screen and you will receive these messages as they are going out and other communication through our channel. Also, you can connect with us by looking at our daily scriptures. We have daily scriptures that come out every day to meditate on. We encourage you to go to the website and get those scriptures, meditate on them, and see how your Christian walk improves. Also, we want to remind you that you may join us each week, Wednesdays, 7 to 8 p.m. 
virtually as we have our Bible study. If you'd like to join us for Bible study, please send your request to Fountain of Hope ATL at gmail.com and we will send you a link to the Bible study. Now, those of you that want study beyond that, you want a deeper study, we have some classes that are available with no cost or low cost for your own spiritual development, or if you have a calling, if you want to be a minister, you want to be a leader, you want to grow in your walk, there are a number of classes that are available to you through the Christian College of Georgia. Please look on our Christian education page and there you will see the links to these opportunities and we encourage you to go there and attend and, and take one of those courses. Let us know how you come out in the class, how, what, how you've grown when you take these classes. Now, some of you are giving and we thank you for those who are giving. Your gifts are making it possible for us to continue to reach people around the world. But if you'd like to give, this is your opportunity now. You may give one of three ways. You may give through PayPal. Go to PayPal and put in at Fountain of Hope. Or you can go to our website at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com and give on the website. Or you may mail a check to Fountain of Hope Christian Church, P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. For those who are giving, let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for these gifts that are laid at your altar today. Lord, these who are giving today, who are sharing their treasure with this ministry, they're laying it on this altar. Lord, bless them in the name of Jesus, Lord, that their gifts may be used to build your kingdom, that their gifts may be multiplied and touched by your hand, God, to do all that you have designed for it to do. Lord, thank you for all that you do and continue to do. And even those who are unable to give today, bless them in the name of Jesus. We ask these blessings. Amen, amen, and amen. There is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus for this opportunity to come before your people. Let me decrease that you might increase. Lord, that your people may be blessed by something today. Lord, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength and my redeemer, that the people may be empowered, that the people may be uplifted, that the people may be encouraged today. We just thank you for this grace that you are laying on the altar through your vessel today. Lord, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to the book of 2 Samuel, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. 2 Samuel, 12th chapter, 15th verse. And it reads, Then Nathan went to his house. The Lord struck the child whom Uriah's wife bore to David, and it became very ill. David therefore pleaded with God for the child. David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. The elders of his house stood beside him, urging him to rise from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. On the seventh day of the child died. The servants of God, David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, while the child was still alive, we spoke to him and he did not listen to us. How then can we tell him the child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, he perceived that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they said, he is dead. Then David rose from the ground, washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. He went into the house of the Lord and worshiped he then went to his own house and when he asked, they set food before him and he ate. Then his servant said to him, what is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child while it was alive. And when the child died, you rose and ate food. He said, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept for, I said, who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and the child may live, but now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? 
I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Then David consoled his wife Bathsheba and went to her and lay with her, and she bore a son, and he named him Solomon. The Lord loved him and sent a message by the prophet Nathan. So he named him Jedidiah because of the Lord. Today, we want to just speak to you about this word, this word, how matters, how matters, how matters, how matters. Today, when you turn on the news, you see people doing so many things that are just evil, they're wrong, they're ill-mannered, they're ill-tempered, spiteful, and they're doing all kind of harm in the world. You don't have to look far either because they are doing those same things in our neighborhoods and sometimes even our own families. I used to be surprised by what people did, but now, I'm no longer surprised, no. I'm just prayerful that God moderates this thing that we call life and how we treat each other. What am I speaking about today? How can a people support leaders who lie and cheat? Yet people do it every day. They do it today. Fox News agreed to pay $787.5 million to settle a $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit brought by Dominion Voting Systems. It is centered about the accusations of what is true and what is not the truth and how it affects the daily businesses of, in this case, Dominion Voting Systems. People are lying and stealing and killing and cheating and so much more, but everyone is not being held to the same level of justice. How do you do these things still and think that God is not paying attention? In these matters, God is indeed still paying attention. What we see over and over is people who have done heinous crimes who will appear, appear to get away with it and walk free. At the same time, there are some people of color and lower economic means who are dealt with swiftly with justice retribution for any bad acts. I'm arguing today that God is watching all of this, y'all. God is watching all of this. What people appear to get away with is not lost. Galatians 6 and 7 tells us, do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. Amen. Whether they are strangers, acquaintances, friends, and even family, if they do things that God is not pleased, God will. God will, somebody say God will, God will uh, have the last say. Carolyn Bryan Donham, a white woman who accused Emmett Till of grabbing her hand and waist in 1955, caused the brutal beating and killing of Emmett Till. This week, she died at the age of 88 years old. Both her husband, Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam took Emmett from his bed and beat him before shooting him in the head and tossed his body in the Tallahatchie River in Mississippi. Both men were acquitted of the murder, yet in 1956, they admitted to the killing. Oh, it's not over yet. And here recently, this woman died. 88 years old, but still, God still has the last say. Folks, how still matters. How you treat others matters. How you live matters. How you talk to people matters. How you mix and walk every day among other people matters. First, sin matters. Now, we are in a generation that focuses on blessings. 
Oh, we want blessings upon blessings upon blessings. We want praise upon praise upon praise. Yeah, blessings before work. We look at grace and mercy before repentance. We want to live life and live abundantly before preparation. Unfortunately, we talk and sing about the good side so much that we forget it costs something to get there. Salvation is free, but Jesus paid the price. If you go about things according to God's plan, you have better results. If you choose sin, there is a cost to sin. Sin separates us from our creator, God Almighty. The fundamental part of this story that we just read is with David and Bathsheba, and is that sin matters. Take some time and look anywhere in the Bible, in places where you see men and women sinning. You see God having someone atone for their sin. Adam and Eve were put out the garden. Moses was not able to go over into the promised land. Jezebel was thrown out a high window and her body was eaten by the dogs. Paul tells us in Galatians 6 and 7, do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. Sin matters. David became king. And one spring day in the afternoon, David was taking a nap. You know how we like to take a nap in the afternoon. Yes, he was chilling in the king's quarters when he got up to walk around his roof to look at his kingdom, lay his eyes on all that he reigned over. And while on this roof, he noticed that there was a beautiful woman taking a bath just over the terrace, Bathsheba. Oh, my, 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 my. She was fine. Yes, she was a good-looking woman. And it was one of those ooh-wee moments. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you lose your train of thought. You can't say what you thought you were going to say because you are the soul captivated by what you see. You, you don't act like you have never acted. Oh, some of y'all sit here looking like, yeah, you see that dude or you see that woman and yeah, it just catches your eye. You stop, you look, you, you pause. Anyway, let's move on. Bathsheba was married to Uriah. Uriah the Hittite and David wanted Bathsheba. He saw her taking a bath and he wanted her. And Bathsheba was married to Uriah. So David set up Uriah to be killed in battle. David made sure that Uriah was in the front of the battle, and he told his soldiers to just stand back, let him go forward, and let him get killed. A setup. David put a biblical hit on Uriah. God held him, though, accountable for the death. Even though it was somebody else who killed Uriah, it was David who set Uriah up to be killed, not just to be killed, but so he could have his wife. After David had Uriah killed, he sent for Bathsheba and made her his wife. David got Bathsheba pregnant and she bore a son. And this brings us to 2 Samuel chapter. Even though she was his wife, at this time, David had her husband killed by setting him up. And Nathan the priest was sent by God to go tell David, God knows what you did. God knows what you did. And he condemned David for having the man killed to have his wife. Verse 15 of chapter 12 says, the Lord struck the Lord struck, the Lord struck the child whom Bathsheba bore from David. David went from having the man killed to having his wife. And God says, no. God says, no. There is sin in this marriage. You married her 
Not because you loved her, but, but because you lusted after her and you had a husband killed. There is sin in the conception of this child. There is sin in the way that this developed. How matters? Yes, it does. Sin matters. Please note that David did not actually lay hands on Uriah, but he was one who initiated the idea of killing Uriah. He is the one who ordered that Uriah be killed. You heard something similar here. He was not the one that did it, but he's the one that ordered it. He's the one that, that made it happen. He is the one who planned. He's the one that stood up in front of them and said, go do it. Oh, you've heard some things like this before. Amen. Amen. He is the one who ordered that Uriah be killed. The Bible says in verse 15 that the Lord struck the product of David's sin. The Lord did not have anyone else kill the child, but the Lord struck the child. And on the seventh day, the child died. Now, it's sad to see a child die, but this child was the product of David's sin. Brothers and sisters, pay attention to this lesson that is brought to us from the life of David. Even if you don't do the act yourself, you are still held accountable if you call someone else to sin in the eyes of God. If you call someone else to do evil against someone, this message is for everyone who influences other people. I'm speaking to mothers and fathers who teach their children to lie, steal, and hurt other people. I'm speaking to adults who teach children to be racist and sexist and mistreat every other person speaking and walking and living and doing on the earth. I'm speaking about bosses who misuse their employees and don't treat them with dignity and respect. These bosses and leaders who cause people to do unjust and evil things in the sight of God. Don't worry about the Reverend Marshall says, but worry about what God says about it. Worry about what God's standards are. Teachers who are passing children who can't read rather than teaching them how to read. Preachers who are entertaining congregations rather than teaching them what God says about the 66 books of the Bible. Politicians who are more focused on raising money than raising the standard of living of people. Company owners who are destroying the lives of the people that work for them, the lives of the people who use their services and products and destroying the world that we live in, all in the name of a dollar, a yen, a pound, or whatever form of currency that may exist. Sin matters, and what God says matters. How matters. And repentance matters. It did not take David long to realize that he had sinned and needed to repent and beg for God's grace and mercy. Nathan came to call out David, and David quickly went into a mode of repentance. David, David began to, 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 to fall prostrate. People, you know when you have sinned. Some of you do it so much that you get used to it. You excuse it. It becomes your normal. Paul told the Romans in Romans 1 and 28 that since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them over to an unfit mind. Some Bibles say reprobate mind. And to do things that should not be done, God turns you loose. When you do it so much that it becomes normal, it's evil, it's, in, it's a sin, it is not right according to God's standards. At some point, God will just let you go and let you do whatever you want until either the Lord will destroy you, like what happened in the case of David's baby, or God will take his hands off you and allow Satan to have you. Jesus tried to let Peter know what Satan was ready to do and to do about him when he said, Simon, Simon, listen, Satan wants to sift you like wheat. Verse 16 of this text says, David pleaded with God for the child. David fasted and, and went in and lay all night on the ground. David prayed and prayed and prayed. 
David had so much to say that it's recorded in Psalm regarding this issue with Bathsheba and her situation. Uh, David lusted after her and what he did to Uriah. He said in Psalm 51, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thorough from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. David knew that he had sinned and he begged and pleaded for grace and mercy. David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit within me. Restore my joy. Some of you are still in a mess that you started and you can't get out of it. You're tired of being in the mess, but you won't admit that you have sinned. You won't go to God and ask for forgiveness. You, do you, you need to go to God. You don't need to go to your past and ask for forgiveness. You need to go to God. You need to go to God. You don't need to put it on Facebook. You need to go to God. You don't need to tell everyone on your chat. Yeah, you need to go to God. David begged and pleaded for the baby, but God denied his request and the baby died. Repentance matters. Repentance matters because how matters. Even though Job was righteous man before God, when he went through his challenges, he questioned God. He never cursed God like his wife suggested, but he did question God. And after God rebuked Job, Job said in Job 42, 5 and 6, I had heard of you by the ear of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. If Job repented, don't you think that you need to repent as well? Jesus said in Luke 5, 32, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus also said in Luke 13 and 3, unless you repent, repent you will all perish. There are no shortcuts, brothers and sisters. You must all go to God for forgiveness. When sin is involved, you must repent. Go to God. Brothers, there are no cliff notes. Sisters, there are no short ways to it. There is no shortcut cut for repentance. There is no app for repentance. There is no artificial intelligence to do it for you. If my people who are called by my name, uh, Christian, believer, Baptist, Methodist, AME, CME, Presbyterian, Catholic, if my people are called by my name. God's people, if you are my people, I'm speaking to you. If you will humble yourself and pray and seek my face, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Folks, you have to pray to God who created heaven and earth, the God who make uh, all that you see and all that you breathe and all that you experience, Jehovah, Elohim, Adonai, Yahweh, the God who sits on high. When you seek God, you can't leave it there. You have to turn from your wicked ways. Let it go. Stop sinning. Whatever the sin is, let it go. Stop sinning and repent. Go to God and ask for forgiveness. Only then will God hear from heaven and forgive your sin and forgive my sin and heal the land, the land, the land, the land, Alabama, Georgia, Ohio, Michigan, the United States, Mexico, Great Britain. Oh, 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 oh. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Uh, we must repent, brothers and sisters. And finally, God's way matters. God's way matters. 
Yes, God's way matters. When David repented, when David fell on his face and prayed, David asked for forgiveness. Yeah, that God heard him. And when the child died, David got up after he prayed and David went to worship. He went to worship. He went to praise God. He went to worship. He went to praise God. He went to thank God. He went to get it right. He wanted to get back right with God. David, afterwards, after he had prayed, after he worshiped, after he got his relationship back together with God, he got up from there. He went home to his wife now, same Bathsheba, and they had a child. They bore another child. And this child, this time, was Solomon. Solomon, who he, who went on to become one of the wisest men to serve as king of Israel. God heard David's prayer. God recognized his worship. Secondly, David did it God's way. Yes, yes, he did it God's way. He gave he he did it God's way. He did it God's way. God's way matters. God gave instructions to Noah to build the ark in a specific way, and Noah and his family survived the flood. God's way matters. God gave specific instructions to Abram to leave his father's house and go where God showed him when he got it right. Yeah, remember Lot. When he got it right, God made a covenant and blessed him in way, God's way matters. God gave specific instructions for Jonah who wanted to disobey and not do it God's way. He got on the boat, but a storm rose. God's way matters. God allowed him to be swallowed up by a big fish after he was thrown overboard. And it was while in the belly of the fish that he got it right, that he got it right. He went to God. When he, when he got it right, the fish spit him on dry land. God's way matters. Now, here's the one that I want you to pay attention to. The apostle Paul was a Romanized Jew who knew the scriptures very well. Oh, he knew his Bible. He knew his scriptures. He knew the Holy Scriptures, and he was a devout believer in God, but he acted in ways that were not pleasing in the eyes of God. He terrorized the Jews. He was one who supported the temple. He was one who acted on behalf of the temple, but he did not treat the Christians the way God wanted people to treat each other. He terrorized the Jews. Paul was there when they dragged Stephen out of the city and stoned him to death for following Jesus Christ, Acts 7, 57 through 58. Paul would go from house to house, dragging both men and women in prison for following Christ, Acts 8 and 3. It wasn't until Paul met Jesus for himself on the Damascus road that he repented and changed his ways. We have some Pauls today who are acting in the name of religion, but voting to defund the police. We have some Pauls today who are acting in the name of religion, but allowing any and everyone to get guns to do all these mass shootings and killings in this country. Today, we have some Pauls today who are acting in the name of religion, who are denying health care to people based on what they are defining as sex. We have some Pauls today who are acting in the name of religion, uh, but these same people are not giving enough funds and freedom to educate the children with the truth, even though history shows that fail to tell the truth causes more harm than good. There are too many Christian families with family lies still exist today, but we have some Pauls today who are saying, don't tell the truth. Don't teach the truth. Don't talk about the truth. When David got it right, God allowed him to have another son the right way with his wife, Bathsheba. His son grew to become the next king of Israel who would eventually build the temple. Later, David says in Psalm 61, for God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. 
some of you are sharing with us today and how it matters in your situation. And there is no shortcut. There is no easy way because God's way uh, is a way that you can't go over. God's way is a way that you can't go under. God's way is a way that you just can't go around. You must come in at the door. Sin matters. Repentance matters. God's way matters. How you live today and how you do what you do matters. Let us bow. Lord, we just thank you right now for these, your servants that are turning their life over to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, those who are turning their lives over to you and saying, right now, I yield, right now, today, I want to do better. I want to live better. I want to walk with you, God. Right now, they are coming to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, surround them with people to help nurture them, to help lead them, to help guide them and strengthen them along the way. Lord, and even those who are still on the journey, Lord, we ask that you would bless them, strengthen them, keep them, is our prayer. We thank you. We adore you. We give you honor. We give you glory. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Brother and sister, we invite you to join this fellowship. You may join this fellowship a number of ways. If you already belong to a fellowship, you can join us by just simply letting us know that you want to join under Watch Care, which means that you keep your membership wherever you are. But as a part of this fellowship, you will be able to enjoy the rights of membership under this opportunity. You may also, if you've never been baptized, we will gladly baptize you into the fall. Let us know. And other ways you can join is you may join by letter. We will gladly receive a letter from wherever you're coming from. Let us know that you want to be a part of this membership. Bring that letter and we will bring you into the fold. And then finally, by Christian experience, amen. You've already been baptized. You've already have come into the fold and, and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you can just step in and let God use you in this fellowship. We invite you now to come. Today is your day. The door stands wide open. We invite you to come. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let us share in this, this, this sacrament as we remember the, the table that, that God has presented for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And you remember that, that God created this, 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 this gift of love through offering his son, Jesus Christ, who, who offered his body and his blood for the, our remission of sins, amen. And so as we remember this, Lord, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to come to your table. We ask that you would bless these sacraments, bless this cup, bless this bread, as we remember the death of your son, Jesus Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, who died and rose from the dead, yet sits on your right hand. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come to the table and opening this table to all who may come. We thank you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. During the season of Passover, Jesus and the disciples uh, went into the upper room. And while in the upper room, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he shared it among the disciples. He, he broke and said, this, this bread represents my body, which was given for you. Take it. Likewise, he took the cup and he blessed the cup. And he said, this cup represents the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. For as often as you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, you remember my death until I come again. Amen. God bless you. Take drink.
Amen. May God bless you as you remember this, this great gift of love that God gave through his son, Jesus Christ, to the world, to you and to me. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you for joining us today in this Hopecast. Our prayer is that something was said that will bless you and strengthen you as you make your journey. If you want to join us or need us, reach out to us. Go to www.fountainofchristianchurch.com. Now unto him who is able to keep us in heaven and to present us before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, majesty, dominion, and power.